Welcome to Every Nation Church Gateway. This is the Gateway Evening with your CEO, Pastor Po Seng. Let's welcome our host for the night. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. All right, good evening, everyone. Are you excited to be here this evening? Great. Have your makan ready. Makan something ready. All right. So we are actually live tonight, Facebook. Um, if you're out there watching us, we just want to say hello to you. All right. Tonight, we got, again, we have something special. Uh, we've, got, um, we've got Max with us tonight. Max is, so, again, he's not a guest. He's really from, he's really family. You know that we've got so many talented people in every nation. I mean, I agree, right? I think ever since the beginning of the year, we've been always having uh, speakers from every nation church, you know? And so tonight, it's going to be the same. We're going to have uh, Max. He's, he, he worships at Every Nation Church, Malaysia, Puchong. Uh, but he's here tonight, and he's going, he's, um, he's going to share something special tonight, okay? And I won't, I won't kind of like uh, spill the beans on him, but I'd like to invite him up and so that we can have a, a, a proper introduction of him. You know, Max is a business coach. Can I have a seat, Max? Uh, Max is a business coach. He's young. You look at him, but uh, he is... Um, very experienced coach, and he is also a very creative guy, right? You run your own creative uh, business, and you do a lot of um, um, those, uh, what you call designs and yes. gifts and all that, right? Okay, so uh, as usual, because he's the first time here with us, speaking, right? You're the first time with us, we're going to... Yeah, yeah. first time, correct. First time, great. So we're going to have, I think, 12 questions. Wow, okay. To, uh, to get to know him better, all right? Since we have not really heard him answer all these questions, we want to put him on the hot seat to answer these questions, all right? You have 10 seconds to answer each question, and after you finish each question, you, you ring the bell. Sure. All right, so first question is, what's one thing that you put in your bucket list? Um, to be sharing here in this stage? That's kidding, just oh, kidding. Come right? on, give me a big round one, of applause right? for one. that. Yes. But uh, <laughs> one thing really sure is I would love to visit all the Disneylands in the world together with my family. My all boys, right, my wives, yes. Great, absolutely fine. That's good. You know, Disneyland is, uh, is a place you must not miss. Right? Exactly. That's so ring, right. the bell. ring the bell. All right. right. Shantou, who's your favorite superhero and why? Who's my superhero, my favorite? I think I would say Superman. Especially from the movie Man of Steel, if you watch it, you know, and I'm not sure, not too sure you watch it. I love it because, and there's a story that close to something that's somewhere in the Bible because I'm a believer of Christ. Oh, okay. So I think that's some I, I love about him. Yeah, Superman, you cannot destroy him. One. Only kryptonite only. Exactly. No? Sounds right. like kryptonite. only sin can destroy men, right? Because <laughs> yes, yeah. Okay, yes. okay, good. So question right. three. Okay, yeah. what's your favorite movie quote? Wow, what's my? I think the the one that most of you are familiar with from Spider Man. Uh, great power comes, great responsibility. responsibility, all right. Great, good, excellent. All right, number four. If you were famous, what would you be famous for? If I were famous, I think I would like to be... I would say to be famous, to be someone influenced, helping people uh, to live beautifully and matters. Wow, that's the heart of, uh, heart of gold there, man, for this guy. Amazing. Thank you. Robert. All right, question five. What is the one thing you're most afraid of? <laughs> Joy, <Joyce. laughs> why? Um, I um, I am um, afraid of uh, if you say insects, spider, cockroach. <laughs> I don't like it. They move so fast. And uh, but if you say in life, I think I'm afraid that I will leave this world without really accomplish things that I most desire the most. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. That's good. Yeah. Question six. Yep. What do people compliment you the most about? Um, Leng Chai and... Uh, that's kidding, <laughs> just kidding. Not really. Let's give a round of applause for that. Leng Chai, <laughs> no, no, come no, on. No. <laughs> All right. I think maybe um, creative is a word. I think uh, recently, I've also more towards uh, inspiration and the strategies. And probably because I touched on that recently, then people Great. see me as someone who do strategy as well. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Uh, Question seven. What are you learning about currently? Um, this... I think this one, two years and in um, self-mastery, I'm more towards innovation design. So I study a lot on innovation, especially throughout the MCO. It's something I go deeper. It's something I hope to add value to as many great. people. It's great. Every good leader must 
Be learning, constantly yes, learning. Yeah? Exactly. All right, good. Ring the bell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's your definition of success? To learn from successful people and help people to be successful. Great. All right. All right. You're in the right company. All right. <laughs> Question nine. What impresses you? What impresses me? I think I impressed by um, leaders. They they serve so willingly despite challenging times. If I look at uh, my, my senior pastor, pastor team, I look at Pastor Paul saying that he still run the church despite different tough situations. And uh, I'm definitely impressed with that. Give him a round of applause. Okay, you're a lead pastor too. <laughs> right? Okay. Thank you, thank you. Question right. 10. What's the first thing you do when you get up in the morning? Open my eyes. <laughs> Just to make sure I'm wide open and see things. <laughs> right? Okay, that's good. Some people say they, went, they go to pee first. Okay, anyway. Without opening <laughs> eyes? That's a skill, right? <laughs> All right, question 11. All right, describe yourself in... Three words. Um, well, it was close like just now, right? I think I uh, would. Someone can be okay, creative. Someone that uh, maybe innovative in that way. Someone who. What three words? Love my wife. <laughs> Love your Lang Chai. Somebody said. <laughs> Lang Chai. Thank you. Right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Last yes, question. Yes. What would you like people to remember you about? As your legacy. Good one. This one is very good. I think, as I said, my, my purpose and mission is really about inspiring humanity to live beautifully and matters. So I think in any way I get in touch with a different individual, whether it's through my coaching, through my business okay. dealing, it's really about making an impact that they right. live matters and beautifully. Great. Yeah. All right. Some of you learned something about Max today, aside from him Yay. being a Leng Chai, you know what I mean? That's <laughs> given already. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. All right, so I will uh, open the floor for you. You can um, share to us what's on your heart today, and I'm sure we will learn a lot from you. Thank All you right? so much, yes. All okay. right, let's give you another round of applause. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you. Okay. And um, so with the next, potentially, I can stand out. Oh, right, okay. I just want to know what's the SOP. Distance, okay. Um, once again, good evening to you here and to you, all of you online and our friends that's invited to join tonight. Um, myself, in short, um, you can call me Max. I am, many years ago, I started as a designer. So that's my primary profession, being on the graphics. I, graf I graduated as graphic design. But along the years, I have privileged to be trained in the area of innovation, particularly in design thinking. So that has been my kind of special weapons or tools to help add values to as many people, to my clients through uh, brand strategies, brand design, brand identity. And uh, so that's a primary part of it. But Three years ago, I have a privilege to join 10X CEOs, and I'm sure uh, some of you know, and Andrea is one of our fellow coach, and we have our Sifus here, Joy Shirt. And uh, in fact, 10X CEOs exist to really create business that matters. It's something I like, and it, it connects dearly to my, my sole purpose and missions, and helping business to be the force for good in the world, in the society. So that's pretty much about myself. And um, over the years, because of the design thinking, um, the, the two kind of the frameworks that I, I was trained, I have put, I privileged to be able to conduct workshop for people that are as young as eight year old. It was last year I was involved in a nation building project to the age of potentially 70 year old, you know, someone in the banking industry. So I worked with Magic as well at one point and really just deliver design thinking workshop, which I'm gonna share with you more. And some of you may heard of it, design thinking, but a lot of people may not know how to apply. My goal today is to give you a simplified version where you can apply immediately. That's my desires, and uh, so that's pretty much about myself. Now, change is the only constant. You probably heard of this quote, right, from Benjamin Franklin. And we know that we are in a season of changes, multiple changes along the way. And what happened today, you sit you know, like you, you probably don't have neighbors next to you because of the next seat is vacant. Some of you are like, break the, you know, skidding now. And um, we know there are changes along the way. Since the beginning MCO, we know that everyone stay back at home, right? You know, you can't go out, that's a change. And then CMCO is business back, business are back. And if you are running business, you're happy that at that time, the, the stage of CMCO, you finally can get back to work. And when it's RMCO, cinemas are back. How many of you enjoy, you know, like movie? You first jump into that, just that no, no one sits next to you, lah. Huh? So these are the changes. HMCO, what is that? Have you heard of HMCO? Not really. So we know that CMCO, RMCO, HMCO is Habis 
MCO lah. Pretty much, hopefully, if there's an end to it, means everything is back. But the thing is, everything is back, whether it's from the first one, MCO, CMCO, to RMCO, HMCO, FMCO, they are back, but not usual. Would you agree with me? Things can never be the same, and we know that there are things that are just changing, businesses are changing, the, your favorite milk tea, bubble teas are probably no longer there, you know, previously, so things are changing. That's why, in those changes, it's important to know that how are we growing, adapting, conquering through those changes. That's important. You know, as I'm dealing with, you know, studying a lot in terms of innovations in the innovation design space, I realize corporate innovation is as important as self-innovations or personal innovation. Corporate innovation is as important as personal innovation. We got to change just like how the corporate needed to change. Okay, I'll explain to you more how is it and why. Innovation simply is a new way of solving problems, all right? It's simply a new way of solving problems. So we take example of Kodak. Back in um, those days, you know, we know Kodak, you, you probably heard of, how many of you heard of Kodak? You probably use that as well, like film, right, like me? But nowadays, we don't hear Kodak anymore. We are there. You know, ever since the digital era, Kodak has been from the big brand to become the disappeared brand. Where's Nokia? You see, Nokia was once the, the phones that we have, and I remember I have it in my, my, my secondary school. But because of the emerging trend in 20, 2009 of the screen-based phone, like iPhone, they refused to take the route of solving the problem that they have, which is the change of the user experience. They lose out in the market, and that's where they are no longer exist today. Right? And you probably know a few more brands that in your mind. But the key is only those brands, those businesses, or even individuals that are willing to take the step of change in a good way, and they can thrive and survive in a way. Okay? And uh, today, one way of innovation, as I mentioned earlier on, is through design thinking. And I, design thinking, in short, is really about human-centered approach to innovation. Right. Or another way to put it is user-centered approach to problem solving. Now, let me give you an example. Why is it innovation? human-centered? Um, it's more important than other areas centered. For example, product-centered, platform-centered, place-centered, promotion-centered. Is it prior before MCO, if, if, or not prior, but during MCO, we know a lot of people are jumping into promotion-centered. You know, I'm going to throw my promotions out, you know, the, the buy one free, how many, and uh, yeah, the whole year deals and things. Promotion-centered. And without, or even people jump into platform-centered. Because previously, no one, or maybe just a handful of people were in the digital world, right? E-commerce. But during the MCO, everyone is just trying to jump into e-commerce. And because they know that this is probably the only chance they can survive, they are limited by the platform. They probably need to hear this and that. In the end, they probably don't want to make much of the profits out of it. Now, human-centered approach in to innovation it simply means it's driven by human values. All right? Human behavior, human insight, or even solutions. It starts from human because as long as your business, as long as you're in touch with people, you got to start from knowing how to solve from their perspective. Right, human-centered design. One particular insight I really discovered you know, in my studies, in me meeting out with different business leaders, um, uh, in whether it's through coaching, whether it's through engagement, or whether it's through social media, those I, I met, I realized this one insight, and uh, this is something that we're going to anchor from this evening, is that human behavioral change change our behavior to meet human needs. See, whether we like it or not, Pandemic has changed the way we behave. Right? I'm going to give you an example later on. But regardless, it's the business owner's job or business leader, if you're here, be able to meet their needs, to change the way we deal with them, the way you approach them, like never before, potentially just to get them again. So human behavioral change literally changed our behavior to meet human needs. For example, people have shifted, shifted from online, offline to online. 
You see, with one way we thank God is uh, during the MCO, we get to have our online service. And you know that during even those times, you purchase, I'm not sure about you, you purchase those uh, the vegetable box or seafood box, you never before, you know, and uh, you, 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 you try it during the MCO. Working manner has changed. Now there's this thing called work from home, right? In fact, I have friends that felt much stress working from home. <laughs> right? So because you, you go to work previously, you clock in, you know, like 9 o'clock and you go to back at 6 or 5. But working from home, you don't have time limits, but you are just needed to make sure you deliver your work. So a lot of my friends, they stress out during MCO working from home. Um, needs over wants. You no longer focus on the things you want, but the things you need. I saw a post in my social media, in my connections, someone that posted up from uh, Agoda, you know Agoda, right? That's uh, due uh, for the resort and things. So he's, he received this particular uh, email from Agoda saying that you have these 200 over ringgit unclaimed credits to be used before it expired soon. But that was uh, during MCO, you know, and there's no particular urge to even make booking for resort and travel. He would just post it out and reply Agoda and say, thank you Agoda, I don't think I have mood to travel, please burn my credits. See, to that extent, you know, people are just not willing to pursue something that they most of the want, but they want to pursue something of their needs. Um, payment and purchase, we know that, you know, we do heavily on scan and make payments, right? And uh, even pasa and you go to markets, people are just using that nowadays. Hangouts and celebrations. Uh, we talk about movies, hangout, and uh, never the same like now. I'm not sure when it's going to be. You can sit together. Celebrations. Three weeks ago, I attended one wedding, and the good thing is, for sure, you know, for, for the couple is you don't have to spend so much just to put out a, a lot of people can come, and sometimes you're stressed out who to invite, but now you only have the maximum of 20 over people and at max, so, uh, so I was there, and I would say, wow, this is the first time sitting in the wedding, witnessing with that someone sitting <laughs> further away. It's just strange, but unique, you know, celebrations. So things are changed, you see. These are the behavioral change. We never had that prior before pandemic. You see, again, whether we like it or not, things have changed. Human behavior has changed. Now, statistically shows, you know, this is from McKinsey, it says that mobile payment has up 80% in importance post-shutdowns. And then mobile apps order, 56% pick up since shutdowns. See, these are staggering no facts, we can see here, you know, things are just changed like never before. All right, um, you use Zoom, I'm sure. You know, I don't think anyone, el anyone here who, who don't uh, know Zoom and things. But Zoom has 300 million daily users. And uh, we are just probably a few of them here. Zoom becoming a verb just like Google. You know, let's Zoom in, we have Zoom party and Zoom gathering whatsoever. Zoom design in a way very user-centered. It's like um, one person talking, you can mute the other person if you don't like. <laughs> Whole breakout room, share screen, etc., etc. It, it's become so easy, you know, to be able to conduct a meet, meet up or even uh, gatherings. And um, so Zoom becoming something that's so important. How many of you think, you know, your world will probably, you know, you, you'll, you'll be worried if Zoom disappeared today? None of you? Or there is some, right? I would so, you know, I use Zoom for, for my meetings, for my coachings, and I, I leverage on it. And Zoom becoming a brand that matters. Right? It has become a brand, that, a business that so matter even in time like this. So the questions to frame before I continue is this. How might we become a business that matter by delivering need-based solutions? Right? If you're running business especially, how might we become a business, an organization that matters by delivering need-based solution, or how do you turn from one to need that way? Now, um, I'm going to introduce this one, the three steps called Learn, Imagine, Make. Now, Learn, Imagine, Make is a simplified version that I, I once used, and uh, I use it heavily, and nowadays, and uh, especially through this workshop, is that it also congruence to the, what I study from the MITx. It, there is a market, technology, implementation segment of it. Now, Learn, imagine, and make is the simplified step from the five original stage of design thinking process where it started with empathy and move on to define then ideations, 
prototype and testing. So that's the original five. Honestly, it took me a while to really get it, even as a coach. That's why I find it even at this point of time, I need to simplify it, helping many people to be able to use it. So hence, I give you learn, imagine, and make. So you look at it, there's a diamond shape, means uh, it's go flare out, and then diverge again, converge and diverge, and um, start from left to right. The first part, learn, is basically, I call it the values identifications. You know that there is a problem to be solved and you can do it, you can solve, and you just need to understand further, gather facts and things. So what you do there is consider your target stakeholders and whether it's existing and the new ones. So for example, they could be your end users, supplier, competitors, right? And even, um, yes, competitors, correct? You see, time like this is not so much of creating more competitions, but it's seek to create collaborations. Right, how do you collaborate with your, your competitors and becoming a force you know, to enter the markets again? So learn. How do we learn? See, basically, it's go about not, about, not, not just about finishing a survey, but having conversation with your stakeholders, understanding their needs. See, these are the process that you can um, work on when you go about having conversation with them, right? Hear their story. Now, oftentimes, you know, you'll be... You'll be you'll be, you'll be um, surprised. Sometimes the grandmother's stories will surface some of the stories that, that it's important to derive at the inside. So you hear what they say, what they think, something that unsaid, what they feel. You see, emotions are important here. Sometimes when they say, you know, I, I'm, I'm very angry, they don't have to say angry, they say, I, I don't like it in that way. So you know that, why do you don't like it in that way? What is something that you don't like? You feel the emotion when you have a conversation with them. You capture that, you capture what actions they do as well. From there, you move from observation to inferring. That's where the needs turn from their needs to find out what is that insight. See, I like what's in our Atanex uh, CEO's core value. One of it is it takes one insight to change the game forever, to change the business forever. So we just need to have that one insight that we can find and jump on to the next part. So for example, this is what it will probably end up in that exercise. Use as many post notes. note. You know, we, we like use post note in Design Thinking Workshop, the Sharpie, and just gather as many of those uh, findings, and then pick out those that you find is particularly, it's like an aha moment, huh? so draw it out. Move on, it's where the imagine space. Now that you have gathered enough of the insight, feedbacks, or some, certain um, capturings, imagine is ve basically value pathway. You're trying to create as many ideas. That's why ideation space is here. Uh, visionary mindset, right? Visionary mindset, it's, uh, it's really about thinking from long term, and then having the engineering mindset is how do I match both futures and uh, what is in the future and then how do I tag action towards it. Um, try to explore link of value propositions from now to the next 12 months, even two years from now. You see, this is very important. As I speak to business owners, leaders, the moment when RMCO time, when they can get back to business, the biggest things they need to know is for the next six months, if what you're doing now Whatever effort you're trying to put in, will that make a change in your business? Will that gather, will that earn you more of the profits or revenue? Consider you're putting the same amount of efforts to, to build your organization at this point of time. Or if you project that the next six months, what is going to happen? Potentially elections, right? Change of government and all these things. Would you still do the same things based on your strategies? or you will make a change. So this is very important. You jump into that space of explore the value propositions for the next 12 months and two years. And then finally, once you have the insight, you have come up with ideas, as many ideas. When I say as many, it's not three ideas. Work with your teams with a given time, come up potentially 20, 30 ideas, then select ideas together. That's where once you select it, move into make. Make is basically, now you see that you can cross to the other side. Imagine like there is a river in between. How do you build that bridge to the other side? So it's taking actions to build prototypes. Or in the language of startups from the book, Eric Rice on the startup, Lean Startup, it's called MVP, Minimal Viable Products. Okay, it's something quick. You know, prototype is not meant to be a finished product. It's something quick, raw, and easy to test out. Test with your users because you need to build something to be tested and then gather feedback. From your feedback, you improve immediately, iterate, and then iterate your 
prototypes. So that is a process. That's where, from that, you potentially will rework your business model, potentially to reinvent your business as well for better way forward. So what you do when you do the, the finding is you can capture what they do previously, and then what after service, after the testing, what do they capture? You always capture the feedback from your users. Okay? Do, think, and feel now. In short, this is like a summary of these three parts. Learn, imagine, make. I added a little actions at the bottom there. In the space of learn, the action is do research, ask, survey, go about having conversations, hear the story of your stakeholders. More important is to seek for insights. Okay, once you got that, move into the space of imagine. That's where team ideation and then idea selection and then move into make, that's where test and gather feedback, iteration, and more important also vision casting. Because at this point, as a business leader, you have followers, you have your team that is like, what's, what's this company is heading forward? You need to charge a compelling vision to bring them forward together. Otherwise, you won't, you won't be surprised they may leave for another, another company. So, so it's important to chart that vision forward. All right? And... Um, so this is another way of looking at it. In the space of learn, it's about what is, asking what is. When it's moved to imagine, is what if. From the what is, I turn to what if. I can create these ideas. And then move into the make as you test it out with your users. What wow? What is something that wow as you capture feedback? And lastly, to define what works. Okay. What I like about design thinking as well is that it's not about creating the best product at the end. Design thinking is about creating a better version of solution than the previous one. Creating a better version of solution than the previous one. So it's keep continually, continually uh, innovate. So that is a process. Again, if you want to look back, is that how might we become a business that matter by delivering need-based solution? You know, to summar summarize is that innovation is really a new way of solving problem. We can't afford to use the same old way like previously, to save, to solve the new problems. Putting human back to the center of solution, that is very crucial because you need to know you're solving a human problems. Okay? I just want to add one particular slide to end with. You see, as a design thinking coach or design thinker, at the same time, I'm also a believer of Christ. You know, when I meet different peoples, all this while innovating in the strategy space, I realize that a lot of times, it takes more than knowledge to solve a problem. It takes more than a framework. Yes, it's a good framework. Learn, imagine, make, or open the design thinking, or whatever frameworks you may find it out there. But when you talk about human-centered, if I were to look back, something that changed my life is really about knowing there's a, to be in the God-centered positions. You see, when you put God in the center of a life, and as a business leader, owner, um, solving problems, oftentimes it's when I realize how God has changed me, God has inspired me, God has given me ideas um, just to be able to help, not just solve my own problem. You see, crises give me problems. I was in a crisis as well. You know, like imagine your clients are not doing well and they drop projects and things. And because of the crisis, I came out with this framework because I, I've learned design thinking. I want to help as many others. But it's because at the entire journey, I experienced God's grace his provisions, and there's projectors coming in and uh, even be able to coach even new clients even throughout the MCO. So I think if I were to have this verse that to leave you with, it will be in Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than what we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. Right, so I leave with you really human-centered design of of solution, but more than that, if you will, tag God and put Him into the center of the solutions that you have. All right? And um, I have. Okay, so I think that's about it, pretty much. I hope to connect with you as well. I think I hope you learned something today. And I'm, that's, now it's the question time, right? I think so I'm done. Thank you so much. And um, if you have a question, please ask. Okay, love to hear from you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Max. Um, let me give another big round of applause, thank you, please. Thank you. We're gonna do uh, a Q and A. Sure, sure. Hey, I like your shoe, man. Thank you. Yours is Yours red, mine is blue. Right? Like Perfect, lah. Wow. Wise men yeah. think alike. You I know like that? that. I like that. <laughs>
All right, how many of you learned something today? Okay, so we have a big segment for Q&A, all right? So I know a lot of you, you come here, you've got your own business, and um, some things that you may want to ask, if you, have, you need some clarification, uh, maybe you have some ideas that, uh, that, you, that you've been grappling with in your own mind and you need someone to bounce with, all right? Maybe we can uh, throw that questions also to, to Max and hopefully we get, uh, we, get some, we get a bright light tonight maybe because of that, all right? So, but I will ask him a question first. Uh, so meanwhile, while I'm doing that, okay, think of the questions that you may have and then after that, we will ask him. All right, Max, thank you for right. just the great presentation. Uh, I Welcome. was just thinking, looking back at the at the crisis that happened. Right? A, lot of <coughs> a lot of companies, especially uh, the SMEs or even the small companies, small right. business people and all that, right. they, they, they were kind of like hit with a tidal wave when, yep. when COVID started, right? Yep. And, um, and so a lot of them actually are recovering now in a, yep. in a, in a way. They, yep. uh, they kind of like, you know, went through that process and they are recovering. Yep. Okay. How would you advise them that in the midst of this recovering, okay, what if there's a second or a third wave of this thing coming. Mm. All right. How would you kind of like prepare right. them for their... Very good. You see, this is something that I uh, would love to add to that, to that us for saying us. You see, we have been, we are, we are going through different stage of MCO, right? Look at it this way. MCOs is just like unusual wave in the oceans, right? You've never been hit before. What unusual wave will tell you? What is to come? There's a huge tsunami that's coming, right? Usual the case, you know, if you know geographies and things. So that means prepare for the worst because now they were potentially in uh, RMCO and then when it's released and things. But when we look at the world's economy, when we look, look at what is hit in the United States and being the controller of finance and things, right? We just need to be prepared for the worst. You see, when I said that prepare for the worst is having that imaginative mindset the second part of it, imagine, is to project the next six months, the next 12 months, what would happen, what significant events would disrupt the way I do business. Yeah, what with your team? Having that future mindset. Don't just think for now, because a lot of time we are just nearsighted. But if we do be able to have that visionary, think further, think six months, 12 months, consider big events that's going to take place. Economy crisis, which we are in, and uh, what would it be a big hit? The financial crisis? Um, elections, potentially, um, change of governments and things, and what else you know, potentially will happen. So if we were to think that way, we will prepare ourselves better. The goal is to prepare yourself better rather than unprepared. All right, good. Anybody, any else follow-up yeah. question to that? All right, Frank, you have one, uh, there is uh, the mic right in the middle. If when, you, when you come up and ask a question, just state your name and at least in the industry that you are in so that we can all know you. All right, Frank. All right. Hi. Uh, thank you, Max, uh, for sharing. Uh, 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 during MCO, do you experience uh, uh, any client that you uh, uh, consult uh, unable to turn around? And if yes, how do you actually help them to go through? Thank you. Okay. Good questions, yeah. Um, so I do have, in fact, I have clients that, um, like I said, I was in a crisis as well, <laughs> like um, some of you here. So one of my clients dropped a retaining projects right, during MCOs because they just cannot move ahead. You know, it's not something important to them, so they have no choice. In fact, I, I was uh, just keeping in touch with, the, with my clients. In fact, I offer help at no cost. Just so that, hoping there was some silver linings after that. But little that we know, because they are in the hospitality industry. So um, after months, the best decision is to close down for now. Because you, you have to know that it takes a lot of courage for leaders to build a business. At the same time, it takes a lot of courage for leaders to close down a business that is not going anywhere. So sometimes, yes, you know, if it's, it's not working anywhere, you know that no matter how much effort you do, you're going to plow, it's not moving anywhere, it's best just to either close it or pause it for a while. That's a, that's a very hard thing to do. I mean, for, <laughs> yes. for one who builds his own business and then he has to make that decision to close. Exactly. It's always difficult. It's very yes. emotional. Exactly, yeah. There's a lot of emotion ties in that. Yeah. Well, I have to close a business before and it was really tough. Especially yeah. when you lay off people. Yeah. So you have experience, yeah. Yeah. So how any, any other questions? Anyone? Any, anybody? It's very good. Okay. Timothy. Yes, 
uh, yeah. So uh, my name is Timothy and I'm actually in insurance. I was in the space of corporate innovation for about a year or so, right? So I find it interesting that you mentioned design thinking and Eric Ries being started up in the same uh, right. presentation. So Eric Ries is almost like learn, make, learn, make, learn, yep. make, yep. keep on moving. But uh, the problem I used to notice was people, sometimes they don't imagine big enough. Right. But if you imagine too much, you don't do anything. Yep. So what's, what's the right balance you know, in your, your kind of uh, experience? Uh, how do you coach people around this? Good, okay. You see, you're right, Timothy. A lot of people will just go wow in imagination, right? And uh, it's no, no wrong. In fact, it's good. I conduct a workshop where they are stuck in their imagination. They just don't know how to come up with ideas. If they can, it would be a good thing, actually. <laughs> but usually, it's given a time frame. You see, when you are put into a situation that is pressure, let's say usually they would not take more than 30 minutes for an ideation session. So let them be able to cook out something, given the short time, come up as many ideas for possible. So of course, it takes a facilitator, a coach, to be able to guide them the process, how to go about, what kind of ideas, what reference can you have, and uh, be able to come up ideas from that way. So it has to be controlled, at the same time help them to produce ideas. Yeah, what I like about that also in the design thinking process is that a lot of people, they may not be so-called creative, which I believe everyone is creative, but they don't see themselves that way. But it's our role to be able to help them to have that confidence to come up ideas that may change things, may disrupt industries. Do you have any secret to make people think bigger? Because people always... Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You see, so, so example, in the process, we have to think, if you are superheroes, let's say Batman, what would, what would Batman would do to this situation? Imagine that your solution, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, how do you, when you look back, what will you do? Imagine that you are looking from moon to these solutions, from the moons, huh? how do you envision that? So these are the guidelines to help them to get wow and uh, get out of the box, come up with ideas. Okay, interesting. Thanks so much. Welcome. Right, that's okay. good. <clears throat> um, I think innovation and creativity is always very important in any business, right? But I think there is a, um, there's a caveat to that a, a bit in, in a sense that I think, you know, we, we can come up with a lot of ideas, all right? I mean, if you bring a child and you ask him to get some, give you some ideas. They'll give you lots of ideas because they are uninhibited, you know, they have no understanding of what limits are and so they can come up with some really great creative ideas. Right. I think the issue is when you get all these ideas, right, you have to define whether it is valuable or not. Is exactly. there a value proposition to that? Mm. Okay, otherwise, like you said earlier, uh, you know, we can keep on getting ideas, exactly. we can spend hours yeah. and have lots of ideas. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of them are just really not valuable exactly. in that sense. Yep. Yeah. So, okay, uh, that just my follow-up comment. Um, yeah. You know, going forward, uh, just something you mentioned about um, preparing for the future in case there are, there are um, uh, what you call a, a, a second or third or fourth yeah. wave coming. What's that one thing that you, you reckon we should um, look for? One principle that we can apply that can at least give us a safe journey forward. Okay. Watch your cash flow or I, I don't know. I'm just okay. thinking from your experience with, 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 with company. Sure, sure. Okay, good, good question as well. I think definitely cash flow is one part of it. You know, how much that you uh, kind of uh, reserve to prepare for the storms. You know, some company you will know that they only have the next three months and some six months, 12 months. So from the cash flow, of course, you will know how much can they do. Because you can bring in innovation ideas, the cash flow cannot handle it. What will happen? But sometimes it's out of that limitation, it just takes that one step or a few steps forward, a bold step to change the game. Uh, so potentially, it's, I think at the end of it is don't panic and quickly jump into, like I said, promotion-centered or platform-centered. You know, everyone is doing e-commerce. You see, e-commerce has turned from blue ocean to become red oceans. You know what I mean, right? So it's like everyone's get crowded. You see, Blue Ocean is basically is, you know, like, you know, and um, there are just a few of you. You have a market advantage. Red Ocean simply means that a lot of people swim in the same pond in a way. So when, when everyone is swimming in the same place or a lot of fishes, what happens? You need to focus on differentiations. What makes you different than your 
competitor state is in the red ocean. So only differentiation, deliberate differentiations, will help you stand out, offer the values that people will see and capture. You see, ultimately, is to be able to capture, create, and deliver values. That's the goal. Yeah. It's good. I think we have a question there, right? Yeah. Ring. My name is Joshua. Joshua. Uh, I want to ask a question because your title is design thinking. So my question to you is that sometimes human beings like us, right? I also someone think a lot. Yeah. Sometimes your thinking is the one that stops your heart from doing something. And how do you know, let's say in your case, right? How do you differentiate the things from your mind and from your heart? And, and since your title wow. is design thinking, wow, right? Wow. Yeah. So it's how do you <laughs> manage the info inside your mind? Okay, okay. Now, great. Joshua, right? Good, good questions. I think it's a tough question as well. Um, the title is Crisis Innovation. Uh, design thinking is one of the two of frameworks that I introduced because I am a design thinker and I uh, help people to be able to think that way. Um, to answer that, you see, the best way potentially is back to the why, W-H-Y. You know, if you read the book Simon, from Simon Sinek, start with why. And I oftentimes, especially in, through this period of time in my coaching clients, my business leader, they think a lot of the how and the what. What can I do? What can I do? How should I do it? But all the time is to think back the core of uh, the solution is why would you want to go for it? See, because uh, you know the book, it connects well with our limbic, limbic uh, brand, the center of it. And if it, we know our why sure and then convince about our why and it's easier to get our communications or our value forward. The why connects very much to our heart. And not just your heart, it connects to your consumer's heart. Yeah. You see, Apple, it's not about producing the best result, right? You know, and uh, best, sorry, best products. If they can call themselves, you know, what we do is we are about producing best products. Well, and any other brands would do that. But their why is simply about pushing human race forward. One part of it. So because of that, they produce wonderful products to match that. Yeah, so that is the heart. I would say, I don't know how it does it answer you. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Actually, I have an answer for you, Joshua. When yeah. you cannot connect the head to the heart, you know what I do? I ask my wife. <laughs> I Whatever she says, you. that's it. That's the thing already. I should learn humbly <laughs> from your examples. Yeah? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Please. And then see. Yeah. All right. Next question. Just get ready. Hi. Yeah, it's good to see um, you. Okay, this is the, you know, we are quite Asian in our culture, right? So my question is, what leadership or team, or can be personal, habits, practices, cultures, or environments are conducive elements for innovation? Wow. Because mm. in Asia, you know, Asian culture, you know, a lot of times we are not encouraged to dream right. and to think. Very good. Yeah. You know? Cool. Yep. Um, so your question is, what... Sorry, leadership I habit, oh, okay. you know, or practices, or culture, sure. or environment is conducive for you know sure. innovation in a company. Okay. Or um, I'm not too sure. Is there something like that uh, in terms of framework of leadership? But one thing that I discovered, and I take it in my prayer as well, uh, whenever I have my morning prayer, is that I, I read this book from Stephen R. Covey. You know who is Stephen R. Covey, right? The Eight Habit. Pick out this book. It's a great book. It's a continuation from the Seven Habits. Uh, of effective people. So Ed Habit is really about turn from effectiveness to greatness. I like this part, especially the capture about the four cores of human being, where we know we have things like emotional quotients, EQ. We also have IQ, intelligent quotients. And then there's also PQ, which is physical quotients. And more importantly, there is what we call the SQ, which is spiritual quotients. And uh, previously, I only know about IQ and EQ. But when I found out about these four parts of it, and it made me realize that, wow, you know, it makes more sense when there is an SQ that's the very core of us, you know, talking about heart, that kind of control the rest of the cues, if you, if you get it. Now, it's also congruent to Robin Sharma in his book, The 5 AM Clubs, right? They talk about the mindset, which is IQ, which is, uh, yes, IQ. They talk about heart set, which is our EQ. And then there's also our, the health set on the PQ, and the SQ, spiritual caution, is our soul set. Yeah, so I, I, this is something very, I think I, I, I love it. And I, I think it helps me to be able to think holistically as a leader, as a person, and how I manage my life. 
you want to uh, improve or enhance your SQ, yeah. you stay back after this exactly. session. Exactly, that's right. right. That's, the, that's the key thing, SQ, right? Spiritual right. caution, yes. Stay back and worship God. Okay, yes. good. Anybody else? Great, please. Uh, oh yeah, Joseph. Joseph, Joseph here. Uh, Max, uh, one question. If you look around in Malaysia, from your experience, if you were to give an award for design thinking, which one would you pick and, and why, you know? Give an example of excellence that you have in seen Malaysia, so far. Sorry. Yeah, in Malaysia. Okay. Um, I think there is quite a number of it. If I w in Malaysia company, is it? Yeah. Not the overseas international company in Malaysia. Okay. If you heard of my, I'm sure you know my Burger Lab. Right, my Burger Lab, yeah. My Burger Lab, in fact, the way they, how they do in terms, they go about their operations. Uh, I'm not a my, my Burger Lab fan, uh, but I know a lot of you are. I, I like a burger as well. It's just that I'm not a fan in terms of like I go there <laughs> all the time. But if you look at the processes, how they handle their food, how they get, inter, in, uh, how they get um, um, talents to come in, they engage interns uh, from students and things, and the process of wastage, and it's amazing, you know, how they handle that. The, the fact that they can survive until today and thrive, and it takes a lot of uh, that design thinking, understanding how people's habits of consum consumption of food uh, and um, burgers, and at that price, still, people will still go for it. So my Burger Lab, our homegrown brand, definitely uh, deserve that as well. Yep, so that's one of it. Okay, great. You know what? I'm going to put... I'm going to put Max on the spot, you know. I thought I've been, uh, there's <laughs> another spot. That yeah, there's another, another big spot. <laughs> then, wow. You know, because it just crossed my mind, you know, yep. one of the biggest industry that is affected by the crisis, yeah. I think it's really the F&B. Yeah. You know, there's so many people, yep. I think before COVID thought that they can actually yeah. start a business, you know, yep. start up a cafe, start up a, a restaurant, start right. up a food business, and then yes. a lot of them crashed, okay? Yep. What would, uh, what would that one advice you give to those who are in the F&B today? Right. What Good innovation, what, in, you know, yep. what kind of ideas they okay. can... Well said. Okay. The key is leverage. Right, leverage. And again, it's also taken from our core values from 10 CEOs. Leverage and disciplines are the key to success. You see, if conventionally, what you offer is just depends on how many seats of people that come in and you max it out your revenue based on the seats or even tap out. But if you don't leverage on virtuals, uh, grab, food panda, whatever things, you are just limited by, potentially cut by half of your sitting capacity. So the key is to re leverage on platform like grab and things to be able to make yourself known. I'm not sure about you, myself, have tried out different new restaurants never before in a physical, you know, like in a, I, I was there, but because of grab, I get to try and always go back, just buy over grab. Uh, both, both over you know, to grab. Yeah. So uh, the thing is leverage platform like such, make yourself known. And if your products are good, for sure, you know, have to be good when it's a food offering, let people know about it. And on top of that is what I said earlier on, because you are in the space or where everyone's in, yeah. differentiate yourself. Yeah. Is there one idea you can throw out here, uh, some, something to differentiate yourself in f and off okay. the top of your head? Um, so of course, differentiate yourself is you, uh, from the branding perspective, been someone that you know, I, I'm in the brand, so and you need to really work on the strategy of from your messaging. Does it connect to your core service, your core, you know, your your competitive advantage? You know, if it tastes good, how good is good? You know, you need to let people know about it. You know, potentially testimonies, testimonials, and everything. Let people know. You know, wow, this is good. The soup taste. You know, the, the fish is from where? You know, if you talk about people, there's a ball of things that people. Right. Oh, this fish is from Sakinjan. Soup paste has cooked for maybe eight hours, the broth, whatever wow. things. I'm hungry wow. now, you yeah, see. <laughs> so uh, you need to surface your value, tell people about your process, and, um, and you have a good price, of course, people will try it out, right? Right, that's very good. Wow, excellent. Okay, we maybe we'll an one last question. Okay, sorry, yes, go ahead. Uh, hi, Max. Um, hi. My name is Evan. I'm a fashion photographer. So um, just now uh, in your presentation, you talked about uh, understanding what your client need and then meeting that need, right? Yep. So, uh, as a as a fashion photographer, um, I always struggle between balancing what my client wants and creating what is unique to me and talks about my art. Yeah. And therefore, um, people will come and pay me for me, and not really be tied to what the market says. Right. So, what's your take on balancing this? Okay, you're a photographer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think photography is one that creates memories, and uh, one of my uh, 
marriage values as well. So I think it's that um, I have, we, we have, under our 10 CEOs, we have one client, the prof, I mean the case is, they are a photographer like you, but during MCO, they create courses, helping other photographers to thrive, even though they may be in crisis, uh, but helping other photographers to thrive and uh, get as much value out of it. In fact, they get so much of revenue out of it. You know, it's one of our coaching clients, and uh, I think that is something, it's, it doesn't mean that it's a, it's a heavily affected industry, but yet they're able to think differently, innovatively, offer values, deliver or, or capture, create values in a way that, like never before, and yet there is transactions. Yeah, so you need to jump out from your usual box and uh, see what is out there. I see. All right, thank you. Welcome. All right, good, thank you. Okay, uh, we'll give... Max, a big round of applause for that. All right. So Thank I just you. want to say that, uh, how many of you learned from this Q&A thing? Right. How many of you learned? Come on, give, you, give me a wave. Come on. Right. Great. All right. So, you know, one of the biggest um, differentiations, so to speak, that we have is that, uh, you, know, aside, you know, aside from a speaker making a presentation, we actually a lot of a last segment of time for you to do Q&A. All right. And so... Uh, we want you to invite your friends to come. I think this is something very valuable. Okay, not many places gives you that kind yeah. of leeway to, to ask questions, to, to test the speaker. And uh, I, think, I think Max passed with flying colors, right? I mean, <laughs> no, no, right? No. Let's give you another big round thank of you, applause. Thank so, you, thank you, thank so, you so much. So thank you very much, Max. I uh, 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 hope you come back again. I'm sure you, you know. That's my bucket list. And, uh, you're right. <laughs> you're, you're, you're always a member of this uh, of this. Uh, platform here so you know it's good to have you and uh, we hope that again like I said that you'll come back and continue to share with us thank All you right. yeah thank All you right, good. Gateway. I think once again for for leaders like them they offer such value to add value to many others I hope to keep in touch with you if there's any chance that you find that hey Max why not we can talk in depth on the learn imagine make you know you have my contacts early on and uh, emails me or if you like to work out is your, if you're a business leader do the business health check. We, we do that for our business owner. You want to, and you can always find out from me, and right. I can talk to you later, okay? Thank you so much, and I uh, enjoy the next segment. Thank you, thank time. you. Okay. All right, good. We'll move See on you. to the next segment.